Hi there. Have you ever found yourself puzzled by sentences like these? Grandma had me buy bread. Or my sister made me do the washing up. Or I got my husband to buy me a new computer. Today, we're looking at causative verbs and unlocking their subtle meanings. These are common verbs, but here they're being used in a very specific way. Causative verbs, meanings where there's a cause and an effect. If you struggle with the meanings of these types of sentences, you're not alone. Let's spend some time today understanding causative verbs. They sometimes indicate the type of relationship between people, their interaction. And these are examples of more subtle meanings in English. Understanding these ways of using verbs will help you read the room and better understand people's relationships. Stay with me until the end of this podcast and I'll give you a quiz so that you can test your understanding here. Hello, I'm Hilary and you're listening to Adept English. We will help you to speak English fluently. All you have to do is listen. So start listening now and find out how it works. Before I do that, if you need some practice with simple English words, if you want to ensure you have the basics in English, then our most common 500 words course is waiting for you on our website at adeptenglish.com. Give yourself a solid base in English and your learning will happen much more quickly. Okay, so causative verbs. Let's go back and see if you understand the meaning of these English sentences. Let's use these as our examples. Grandma had me buy bread when she didn't need any. I got my husband to buy me a new computer for my birthday. My sister made me do the washing up. My teacher let me leave the classroom early today. So to have someone to do something, to get someone to do something, to let someone do something and to make someone do something. These are the verbs I'm talking about. They indicate that someone's causing an action. That's why they're causative verbs. But they all mean something slightly different. They can mean allowing, requesting, expecting or forcing another person to do something. The first one, to have someone do something. And the example I gave, grandma had me buy bread when she didn't need any. It's like saying grandma gave me the task of buying bread. It's a subtle way of showing someone's influence over an action. Here it implies that grandma had either given me the impression she needed bread or grandma had asked me to go and buy bread. There's a little bit of a suggestion of service here. It could be that grandma's not well enough to go and get her own bread, so you do it for her. Or grandma's given the impression of needing bread, so you go off to buy some for her. The cause here is grandma's request, please get me bread, or the perception that bread is needed. The I'll have someone do something sentence implies that the person I'm requesting to do the action won't object, they won't resist. They'll do the task gladly and willingly. Or at least that's the impression that I want to give to you. So if you have someone do something for you, essentially you're giving them the responsibility for doing it and you're not anticipating that person will object. You need some extra chairs for the party? I'll have my husband bring some over for you. So the idea here is that the person speaking will ask her husband to bring the chairs over and it implies he will definitely say yes. I only have to ask him. He'll do it willingly because he's a lovely chap. You might also hear this in a context where one person is serving another. I'll have the waiter bring a clean glass. I'll have the bellhop carry our bags up to the hotel room. That sounds old fashioned to me, like something out of an Agatha Christie novel, maybe. But bellhops or bellmen are still common in the US, I believe. And maybe in the UK too, but in posher hotels than the ones I go to. So to have someone do something means I'll request it and they'll do it willingly. Second one, have you ever convinced someone to do something for you? Perhaps persuading my husband to buy me a new computer. So this is to get someone to do something. It's about persuasion. 
making a request that someone agrees to, perhaps even reluctantly. I got my husband to buy me a new computer for my birthday. This one means either that I asked my husband to buy me a new computer and he said yes and went and got one, or that I persuaded him to buy me a new computer, even though he didn't want to. So although the husband does buy the computer here, there's the sense of a little more respect. I got him too, means I put in a request and he agreed. He could have said no. If I say here instead, I had him buy me a new computer, that suggests that he didn't have much power to resist. And sometimes we use to get when we mean we're making use of a service. So we might talk about the action, the service, without mentioning the person who's going to do this for us. So I'm getting my hair cut tomorrow, or I got my computer repaired, or you're going to get your cat groomed. Notice in this use of get, it's not getting someone to do something, which uses an infinitive, like to buy. Instead, it's getting something done. So it uses a past participle, like cut, repaired or groomed. Third one, I made my sister do the washing up. So we're moving on to a stronger meaning, to make someone do something. This one's forceful. It's like I had to insist my sister wash the dishes. She didn't want to, but I made it clear it was her turn. Here, to make indicates a lack of choice, a bit of pressure. It could be that I threatened to punch and kick her if she didn't do the washing up, but more likely I went in with some heavy persuasion and my sister relented and did the washing up. It suggests two things. I was determined that my sister would do it and set about making it happen. So it was slightly what we call coercive. C-O-E-R-C-I-V-E. The person on the receiving end of the maid had little choice. And it implies there was resistance. My sister didn't want to do the washing up and she wouldn't have done it if I hadn't made her. Does that make sense? Fourth one. My teacher let me leave the classroom early today. In contrast, to let someone do something is gentler. It's about permission. Often it's the kind gesture, showing flexibility and understanding. To let is more informal and often used in everyday conversation. In this sentence, the let me could be replaced by the more formal verb to permit. My teacher permitted me. That's P-E-R-M-I-T. Or you could say my teacher allowed me. That's to allow, A-L-L-O-W. It's about the level of formality. So to let is the least formal, to allow is in the middle, and to permit is the most formal. So my teacher let me leave the classroom early today. This might have happened whether or not the person speaking had asked to leave early. But the clear expectation for the person speaking was that they were expecting to stay longer. Again, does that make sense? Leaving early wasn't a given. It was the teacher's choice to allow it. She let me. These small verbs are crucial in English. They help you understand nuances and intentions behind actions. It's not just about the words, but about the stories they tell. These little tiny English verbs may not sound that different, but the differences in meaning are important to understanding what's going on. It's what we call picking up the nuances. And again, it's that idea that you need to read the room if your level of English is going to be advanced. So tiny little words, had me, got me, made me, let me. They're all in the most common 500 words, but it's this subtle use, this different meaning. And notice the slightly different forms. I'll get her to is the only one that puts a to in front of the verb. So careful listening to how they're used in different contexts is important. Let's practice. Let's do a test where you fill in the blanks. I'll read some sentences and you see if you can supply the missing verb. It's going to be made or make, have or had, get or got or let, which is the same form L-E-T in all tenses. Here goes, which word fits best? I'll say blank in the gap. Number one, she blank her dad to give her a lift to the party. Number two, I blank my mother buy me some new socks by complaining a lot about the old ones. Number three, 
I blank my cat sleep on the bed because otherwise he gets lonely and cries outside the door. Number four, my mother blank me make cakes all afternoon, even though I didn't want to. Number five, yesterday I blank my son stay off school because I felt sorry for him as his hamster had died. Number six, I'll blank my daughter to give you a call and then you can talk through the interview process. Number seven, I'll blank my son carry your suitcases for you. They must be so heavy. Number eight, the teacher blank me read out my essay to the rest of the class, even though I didn't want to. Number nine, I'm going to blank my ears pierced next year. That's the end of the test. How did you do? If you're not sure or you need more time, then stop the podcast here and go back through it again. OK, here are the answers. Number one, she got her dad to give her a lift to the party. She put in a request for a lift and dad said yes. Number two, I made my mother buy me some new socks by complaining a lot about the old ones. This one sounds like I did a lot of complaining about the old socks, such that my mother gave in and agreed to buy new ones. Number three, I let my cat sleep on my bed because otherwise he gets lonely and cries outside my door. So this one is about giving permission to the cat. Number four, my mother made me make cakes all afternoon, even though I didn't want to. Here, either had me make cakes or made me make cakes would do. Had me is perhaps slightly more polite. Made me implies more strongly that I didn't want to do it. Number five. Yesterday I let my son stay off school because I felt sorry for him as his hamster had died. So again this is giving permission. You could also say I had my son stay off school in this one too. But let is the more obvious answer. Number six, I'll get my daughter to give you a call and then you can talk through the interview process. So here, get, as it's the only one that uses to with the verb. And here it sounds as though a polite request will be made to my daughter and she will agree and make the call to you. Number seven, I'll have my son carry your suitcases for you. They must be so heavy. So again, this one implies that the person speaking has some authority over her son. She only has to ask and he will willingly carry those suitcases. Number eight, the teacher made me read out my essay to the rest of the class, even though I didn't want to. So that's slightly coercive. I didn't want to read my essay out to the class, but the teacher made me. I felt like I had no choice. Number nine, I'm going to get my ears pierced next year. So this one is to get with a past participle, which tells you the person is using a service. Here, ear piercing. Okay, hopefully causative verbs just got a bit easier for you, or at least those four most common ones did. As ever, give us feedback on this podcast. Was it easy? Was it difficult? Was it just at the right level? And listen to it a number of times to consolidate your learning. Enough for now. Have a lovely day. Speak to you again soon. Goodbye. Thank you so much for listening. Please help me tell others about this podcast by reviewing or rating it. And please share it on social media. You can find more listening lessons and a free English course at adeptenglish.com.